Hey, what's up, everybody? And welcome back to the channel today for another special interview. I'm alongside of a director, writer, lead actor in this film, and amongst many other things in a long, luxurious career, I'm here with the star of the film, American Badger, which is going to be on demand uh, for release on June 15th. I'm here with Kurt Cowett. Cowett, excuse me. How you doing today, Kurt? I'm good, man. How you doing? Good, good. Thank you for taking time out of your day. I hear that you're on location, busy right now. So I definitely appreciate this time to talk to you for a little bit. Uh, I got Saturday, Sunday off. It's a, it's a, it's a blessing. It's beautiful here. It's amazing. Yeah, it's considering the pandemic and where operations were uh, little to none, uh, it's absolutely a blessing to see uh, the people doing what they do best back in the world. So that's always a good thing. So happy yeah. that you are away and not at home. <laughs> yeah, thanks. <laughs> so look you your your career now look your work and your imprint has been over this business for over 25 years which every time i read that i'm like the dude doesn't even look like he's out of his mid-30s like i'm, I'm confused here like <laughs> make it make sense but i do want to know considering that um you know your your bread and butter is stunts what are you doing to keep your mind and your and your and your your mind and your body young um my mind and body young. I'm well. Martial arts is good, but I think probably more than anything else, it's it's being a surfer. Yeah. Uh, that's kind of keeps keeps me keeps me functioning. I usually I usually live at a surf camp for three four months every year if I can, at least three months. And I always you know I always get to the camp and I'm exhausted. And by the time I leave three months later, I'm I'm all like you know feeling like I'm 25 again, but uh, <laughs> <Good>. I'm not. <laughs> I'm not 35 either. So <laughs> yeah, I'm like, the, I, I, like, I'm like, I'm not going to figure, definitely not going to ask, but like I'm counting it up. I'm like, all right. So I know he has this much in his career and I can see that he looks like he's this like, but Hey, that's good, man. That means you're going to have a long, luxurious career, stay young and continue uh, blessing our screens with, uh, with, with your magic. And that brings us to this film, American Badger, which is a film that when I reviewed, I told people just have fun with this. There, there is um, all types of reviews up and down about this, but considering mm -hmm. your background, considering um, uh, your your reasoning behind making this film, this is a film that you kick back and you have fun. It's a very good medium between the action, between uh, the romance. You can even add to it, and ultimately, you know what you bring best, and that's the stunts, and that does deliver. Uh, but until doing this, before we talk about the film, like, yeah, I read this as well. You were in charge of 120 stunt people and you uh, stunt performers and you work for about four months and six weeks of cinematography. Huh? <laughs> like, talk, yeah. talk me through the day to day because this sounds nuts. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was uh, extremely ambitious, uh, given the, the budget of the film. <laughs> <laughs> like I'm a complete idiot. Uh, yeah, we 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 started uh, doing choreography about four months before principal, and you know, twenty we we do a fight scene like 18, 20, 25 guys. We come in and we we start jamming and we figure something out, and then we come back, you know, and we come back, we come back till it until we could get it tight, so there was no cuts, and uh, we were trying to do everything in like big long wonders of you know as as few cuts as you can. Yeah. I'm not. I'm not a big fan um, of you know over chopping. Multi takes. It. Yep. Me too. Yeah. It kind of. It kind of just takes away. Like I, I like to put things back. Like a, you know, uh, on a 50 mil lens and just follow the action without yeah. having to like. Yeah. Yep. It's just something I think looks better, and this it's just really hard to do because the, yeah. the choreo has got to be really tight. There can't be any 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 uh any space between the movements or, or falls apart every single movement so it just takes yeah. a lot of choreo a lot of time has some just you know phenomenal talent we, we have so much talent up here um we, we have the deepest talent pool in the world right here in, in vancouver and stunts so there's like 580 stunt performers here yeah so i had like a quarter of my friends come out and, and uh you know jam. a quarter quarter so if you're doing the math folks that's 120 120 times four is how many friends you have just in stats <laughs> yeah yeah i've been around for a while man been around yeah. for a while. uh and yeah man we, we we got it to set and and some of the you know some of the pieces took like 20 20 30 35 takes 40 takes to try to get everything 
uh, you know, with like only one or two cuts and big long sequences to like 18, 15, 18 people. Um, and uh, yeah, it, it, it was um, it was a long, arduous process and getting it cut and getting it into the can. And, and yeah, it's, it's kind of an art house action movie. So it, yeah. it's, uh, it's, it's kind of polarizing and, 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 and I think that's good. Yeah. Uh, that's kind of what we were, we were going for, you know, there's, there's a lot of four star v reviews and there's a lot of one star reviews, mm -hmm. but there's no two star reviews, which is yeah. great. <laughs> yeah. 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 And that, and again, that's, that's more of the, you know, if this is your cup of tea or not. And I think like, I like my action to be just like this. I said, the plot was simple, but when you're going in there, they're kicking butt. And that's when I want to see in my action films. I want to see people kick butt and instantly, like the moment the film starts, you're like, Oh. <laughs> so now that yeah. you're here, yeah. which I appreciate, you know. Yeah, it starts with the with the punch in the forehead. Whoa. Yep. Yep. And, yep. And, and then it feels slow for a while, just because the, the beginning was like ridiculous. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, so because you have such um, um, a, a long career, do you embrace this challenge of like pushing the limits here? Because again, you your, your fingerprints has been over almost everything. And you could easily take the easy route or the route that you learned could be maybe the most efficient. But this absolutely seems like a test to yourself. Is that what you're continuing to kind of re revitalize yourself by keep pushing the barriers here? Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's, it's funny. You don't really get to to push uh, the choreography barrier in, in TV and movies as much as, as one would think, because... Um, well, you just don't like unless you're on a Jackie Chan film or something like that, and he doesn't make movies anymore. Yeah. Um, then it's it's very hard to do it, even even on a, a Jason Statham film. You know, they just cut the hell out of everything, <laughs> and um, even even the big budget, you know, Marvel comic book films, the choreography isn't really uh, that tight. It's just shot quite well, and they've got big yeah. set pieces and things, and so. Um, yeah, someone is like purist as 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 I am, you know. Like I, I I teach choreography to my my colleagues for charity, so we raise a lot of money in charity. I teach action design choreo to uh, to a lot of uh, like my friends, my you know younger generations, even older generations. And and so for me, I'm a, like I'm a real purist when it comes to choreo, and so I wanted to really like nail this character's choreography down, really yeah. pin it, you know, pin into this like psychopathic guy that's like you know, kind of floating around, then he just snaps and just goes mm -hmm. ballistic and makes it, you know, you know, really, really centered around his character and, and making the choreography really pure, not, not, you know, cutting the crap out of it and, and making it, you know, you, you can have Liam Neeson or somebody doing, you know, die -ya, die -ya. you got to put three cuts in every move, right? And it's just like, ah, ah you know, but uh, yeah. As a purist, we don't like that. You know, we're not crazy about that. So. I'm not even going to make a comment on that. But <laughs> <laughs> I will say I will say this then because to kind of tap into your brain, then what has been a project outside of yours that you've seen? And you said, like, that's how you do it. Ooh, um, there's been a few things like the, the I think it was the pilot of Daredevil, that opening scene, that opening uh uh, piece of choreo was, was great. There was a lot of uh, stitching with the cuts, like where they white pan a little bit. Mm -hmm, they, uh, mm -hmm. that, that was the first thing in television. Um, that was probably the best fight scene I've ever seen in TV. And I believe it was rewarded for that that one hallway fight that they had or something like that. So yeah, yeah. stairwell. It was it was really yep. good. Um, and then uh, you know I got to give props to like my one of my teammates, friends, Peng Zhang. He's He's Chinese uh, choreographer. He did uh, Kingsman, and there's that that church sequence in Kingsman. Um, yeah, where it's just it's like <laughs> I think it's like Rush playing. Yeah, it goes through and and again a lot of stitching. But he he didn't even really have that set of a plan going into that, and he he shot that and and just like by whip panning and figuring out. He's a genius, and he would just like figure it out as he went. By the time it's through, it's like you're wrapping it up at the end of the day, and you're like, "What just happened? How, is it gonna cut? How the hell is it going to cut together?" And it does, you know. So that's that's how you do it, right? But it's it's rare, man. It's super yeah. rare to to be able to to uh, be allowed to do what we do best because yeah. there's there's just so many layers of politics and layers of studio. Like we 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 design a fight piece in collaboration with the main unit director, and then it goes up to the chain of the Disney execs and it comes back down and it's got to all be changed. And it's like, okay, well, 
Um, so we don't really get to do what we, we really like very often. <laughs> I, I'm going to have to clip that part out because that is entirely what I try to um, uh, try to explain to my viewers is that when you see people who can take any job, any job in the, in the industry and they decide to do something for themselves, that's there's because there's a plan and, and that's it. This absolutely makes sense to, as to why you make project. And I, what my next question is going to be is a person who could take any job. You could work for anybody and you can bring be brought in in, in any project. They, anybody can use your expert, expertise, but you challenge yourself by wearing every hat possible in your own project, which is nerve wracking. You know, oh, you it's insane. Man. <laughs> it's insane. All right, I'm not a mess. You know, yeah, and, and so like it makes sense because now you able to test yourself and you able to do things the way you want to do it without somebody else who doesn't have your expertise telling you like, hey, I, I don't want it that way. And we all have experienced that in our life where we like we know this. But somebody else who doesn't always like, oh. Yeah, it's exactly right, man. If you're, yeah, it doesn't matter if you're in, in music, dance, whatever, whatever you're in, you know, pr uh, coding, you, you're gonna have a, you're gonna have a bit more insight into it if you start from like, you know, I started in 1993. Uh, you know, my my first fight team was like, uh, Jackie Chan stunt double and one of the Jackie Chan fight team guys. And so, so you know, I grew up jamming and training with those guys. I mean, how how could how could any executive have any clue what it is that, that we would actually do when we're left to our own devices, right? Yeah, those suit guys. The suit guys, man. <laughs> we got it. <laughs> so so let, let's talk about the film uh, uh, a little bit. So something that was really interesting to me was, and, and I think I almost can answer my own question a bit based on something you said, but the character Velvet here, uh, when we our first introduced her she's she's a target then uh and then uh dean or, or badger and velvet seem to kind of be fond of each other and i also think that this is her origin story as much as it is we're being exposed to to badger because she is starting to really grow fond to him and actually starting to become a little but maybe a lot like him as you know we'll talk about things to come possibly but why was it important to expose her story the way it did because i felt like it could have been a moment of sugarcoating the things she went through but we got full explosure of just the horrific things that this character um has to go through in order to kind of understand her psychology uh who's obviously uh played by andrea who does a fantastic job in this role but why was it important to really give this story as raw as it was well the thing about the the script itself, if you if you analyze screenplay, she's actually the main character. She she actually goes through a transformational arc, and Badger doesn't. He 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 comes out of a shell, just enough to push her out of her you know her her horrible situation. Then he goes back into a shell and retreats. So he doesn't really transform, but she she does, right? So he. He, you know, he introduces her to this whole new new situation, new world, and kind of, you know, uh, he he's kind of blind to her the whole time, and then he pushes her out of her comfort zone, and pushes her into this new this new place, and then she finds out, no spoilers, but she finds out that he's actually tricking her into trying to killing her own her own pimp, right? And so, uh, in the end, can't spoil it, but essentially, she she has that that transformative. Uh, it's a transformative moment at the end and that that actually makes her the main character so it's really important to follow her um and uh we can hint at the at the follow-up the sequel um because i you know I'm, I'm you know i'm i'm an art house filmmaker as well right i you know I, I do choreography for a living but i'm also an art house filmmaker and so we actually um we actually went and did reshoots and we're, we're making we're making two films now so one is one is through like dean the badger his perspective of how he met this girl how how it went down it's like him telling a story right his voiceover he's telling right it. then the other film that we're doing is going to be through her point of view so it's it, it's similar plot points but how she sees them right and so every scene is different every piece of dialogue even though the situation is the same the dialogue's different so we shot both films really at the same time we parsed them out and had to do reshoots to, to get them all working. But this was a monster project. This this is two feature films at once. It was yeah. 
it was ridiculous what what we <laughs> we set out to do. <laughs> yeah, ridiculous. <laughs> so, sounds, her, it sounds like you embrace challenges no matter what you do. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, man. but yeah, her her performance in 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 uh, Velvet, it, it, the the second film, is is just amazing. Like she's got all these monologues that, uh, and her voiceover that drives it. And uh, but by the end of the film, she she actually doesn't even really believe that he's a hitman because she's never seen all the things that we saw in Badger because we were with him. She yeah. wasn't with him. So she yeah. sees him as something completely different. She sees, sees him as like some psycho that lied to her trying to get her to kill, you know, her, yep. her pimp who she's actually kind of like controlled by and in love with, right? And so um, she just sees him as a psycho and doesn't believe anything that he ever said. And then she leaves town. And so we see it all from her perspective and we don't know who this guy is. So when you watch, it's kind of like sitting in a room the first movie is like, Badger, tell me everything that happened in this. And he tells his story. And then it's like having her in a separate room. And it's like, Velvet, tell me everything that happened. Yeah. And she tells a different story. It's like, you know, it's like a, a, a relationship that breaks up badly. And you got one <laughs> one person talking, oh, he did all these things. This is crazy. And it's like, <laughs> no, I didn't do any of those things. She's great. You know, like we have got <laughs> two different stories. So I find that kind of fascinating. So I get to fulfill, you know, a bit of my, you know, my art house, uh, uh, screenwriting background and, and you know because yeah I, I, I like action films but I also I also like the art of, of filmmaking or I wouldn't you know I wouldn't be dumb enough to do, do this if I... <laughs> <laughs> that's also I, I do need I do need to know a little tip here now I, I have seen American Badger and obviously I'm gonna check this out once it releases which I heard rumor September I don't know if you can deny confirm or whatever but that's that um but is there a strategy in watching this now? Because considering that the viewers are going to kind of come in as therapists, as it seems, is <laughs> yeah. there like a parallel way of watching or is it one after the other? Or how would you recommend anybody to, to pick up these projects now? Because regardless, if you watch this, you know, in, in, in a week or so, and then that comes out, you're going to want to kind of see where these things are kind of bouncing with each other. So like, what would you say is the ideal way to watch this? Um, I'd say watch it with uh, your significant other, you know, like it. it oh, this, be, oh, so you you chose violence today. <laughs> it might be kind of, it might be kind of cool. Well, you know, it's funny. You know, it's really funny is that the Badger reviews and uh, we're, we're actually we've actually got higher reviews on Badger from the female critics and female users than from male, and I think it's because when uh, uh, like the way it's marketed and you have to market this in this you know martial arts context so that it finds an audience yep. and i think a lot of i think a lot of like uh you know the the guys who think they're going in to watch a really brainless kick-ass movie they're a little bit disappointed you know because it is it is film noir right it's a film noir movie it's like it's slow paced it's a slow burn and then it's explosive yeah. right and and uh for some reason the female audience is more um they're they're more okay with that and and so if you watched it uh with your significant other she might like it or he might like it you know it, it is my you know they they might find it you know something interesting and then when they watch the second version they might be able to reflect on themselves and go you know what we, mm. we don't understand each other as well as we thought you know maybe these are lofty Goals. No, no, no. I, th I think I think what you're saying is what I'm guilty of. I went in here and I wanted to see an action film. And while the stunts and everything was fun, I never much like you said, I never identified Velvet being the main character because maybe I never sat there and, and focused on that character enough to realize like there is an entire story going on here. Yeah. And as we said, we're going to see it from her vantage point And, you know, now our perceptions are going to be like, oh, shoot. <laughs> I was kind of harsh on her in that moment when I really didn't understand what was kind of happening. So yeah, that's yeah. a very interesting. She's main, yeah, she's the main character. She she's the one that comes out of it with the growth, and she, she you know, she's any main character is like stuck in their own their own world and they can't get out because of their own belief systems. And then you're yeah. you smash them into a situation that's very uncomfortable that makes them change, find something to dig deep to change who they are and their belief systems at the, the end change and they they're able to transcend their you know their situation whatever that is even in a rom-com or in something really dark like this when a main a main character can you know be introduced to something that really makes them uncomfortable totally takes them out of their element and forces them to change that's that's the main character of the film so but yeah again it, it you know it's so it's so um 
it's so hard hard to wrap your head around that when when you've got yeah these huge these huge set pieces huge fight scenes yeah and, and you know we don't we don't have a lot of time to go into her world that much because we we need to you know stay with the badger character just for the sake of the film but in 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 velvet's uh film completely different where it, there's almost uh there's only one one action scene or two and it's because she's in it right mm. so there's no kung fu fighting nobody's yeah there's not not a lot of bone breaking crunching going on but there's there's still there's still a few action pieces but but uh you know only plot plot driven for for her transformation okay i mean yeah. uh, two things to add to this uh number one uh because you won't say it but i'll just say it but guys will be guys and a lot of guys refuse to try to see the feminine side of things and that's where the issue lies here and as you i would have never been able to see that through the reviews but it's clear proof is in the pudding here we are only we're only going to see things one way then we're never actually going to always see the truth and that's where women are some of the best people in the world because they look at it as a complete picture of things no matter what it is in the world so they're more complicated than we are right like yeah let's face it you know the the feminine is more complicated than the masculine we're pretty simple we're like hunters generally we have you know we have a goal a job we go there they're they're uh, you know they're way more interested in, you know i'm generalizing but they're way more interested in people <laughs> yeah and, and stories and they're way more they're way more interested in 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 talking to people we're more interested in creating things they're more interested in 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 relationships so they're 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 much more complex of course i'm generalizing completely but they're yeah. you know they're generally more complex than men i i I, I find I'm, I'm usually writing, uh, despite, you know, the fact that I'm, I'm very, and I'm a very masculine guy, you know, like I, 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 you know, I'm very focused on creating things and building things and things. Um, I do find that I, I, most of, most of the films, most of the scripts that I've written and my, my previous film, um, was an art house movie that won a bunch of awards and, and, and I wrote it through the, 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 the female, uh, lead character as well. And I think four, four four out of the six uh, films that I've had made or option. Um, uh, yeah, three, three, yeah, three, three out of four films that I've made have been uh, lead females. So yeah, I just, I write through that character. I find it more interesting to write through. The yeah. Film. Yeah. So, you know, to my second point is, I mean, it only makes sense that there's a third one that's somewhere down the line. I mean, I know you're busy and all, but I'm thinking that we're going to want as group. I don't want to spoil things, but I think we're going to be due to kind of see some form of a reunion here at some point. It just seems like it has to be a thing, you know. That would be very cool to do a, a follow up to to the uh, the, the original two projects. That would be very yeah. cool. Yeah. Yeah. Look, you can't have us come in as therapists wanting to figure out you know both sides of things, and then after that we don't get like a follow up as to like, so how's everyone doing? You know. <laughs> so let's check in with them five years later and see yeah. uh, a couple of years years after the carnage and see how everyone landed uh yeah yeah, yeah no no I've, I've outlined a few a few uh different um scenarios for that and um i i actually might uh we've actually got development funding for a sequel to these films um but uh i i i'm not gonna i'm not gonna uh be in in one of my own films again it's it's just oh. it's just it's too it's too much man it's too much it really is like especially in indie films like i'm putting out fires we're got like the roof is gonna collapse like literally because you have people the crew staying on the roof like they can't be there and i got like one of my producer you know he's he's buying bottles of scotch for the guys are like yelling at me okay we're getting ready to roll and then i gotta like snap into this character and try to like act and i can't <laughs> you know I'm gonna act when there's, you know, like the whole world is always just about to fall apart around me. You know, it's like I got a hundred people to feed, and we have, you know, we have the budget of like one percent. We literally have one percent of the budget of of a Marvel film or something like that. Not yeah. even, not even one percent. We've got now they're like hundred million. We've got like you know half of one percent, and, yeah. and you've got to pull off a, a movie. And um, I, I can't do it again. Yeah, I, I, can't, I can't do it again. I, 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 unless I'm not direct, I'll go on camera if I'm not directing the movie. But um, I never wanted to be a movie star. I want to be a filmmaker. This is yeah. I'm making films here. If I want to be a movie star, I would have put up, you know, 
nice lighting on my face. I, I actually went all super weird Wong Kar Wai uh, style. He's this, he's this experimental filmmaker in Hong Kong in the 90s. And, and I did all my all my close-ups with like big fisheye lenses. So my face distorted and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if I wanted to be a movie star. I would have like lit it, put it on sticks, been handsome, been charismatic. But it wasn't, that wasn't the intention, you know. I want to, I want to be a filmmaker. I, you know, I want to, I want to wear as many hats as I can, push myself as hard as I can, create a body of work that's really undeniable. You know, that's that's the whole point, and and then transition over into directing that Marvel film after you know after this is over. Um, when I'm when I'm too old to to throw a 540 kick or a, you know, a backflip down the staircase, <laughs> I'm right at that edge right now. <laughs> I, I, am, I am performing in this Disney film that I'm, I'm also helping coordinate, and and uh, I was sore after the first four days of rehearsal. Man, um, mm. I was sore. Everything hurt. <laughs> Everything hurt. I felt. Oh, we had to do so many falls. Oh my god, I was so sore. <laughs> <laughs> like, it might be, might be time to hang up the elbow pads, Kirk. Uh, <laughs> you can't do that. You're in, you're in the same guy. There's no end to this. <laughs> yeah, maybe, maybe, maybe not. I don't. <laughs> well, a, a, as long as they're paying the big bucks, and as long as you're happy, then I think you you just keep pushing. You know, but. Um, yeah. A lot of gems out of this interview. A lot of a lot of knowledge here for myself and surely for the viewers in this. So I'm definitely looking forward to uh, seeing upcoming projects that you're in or things that you are have imprinted on. I, I do have a little bit of a hint of what you're doing right now, and I think that that's also very very cool. And um, yeah. you know, hopefully, you know, uh, everyone checks out American Badger and then. Uh, there's a sequel coming later this year. Rumor, he's not going to deny, deny or, or deny or confirm because I won't put anybody up to that. But I have read a few things and I'm just going to say just keep an eye out as we need to find out uh, Velvet's side to this story or her vantage point, as as he said. So Yeah, her side of the story. That's a good point, way to put it. Let me tell you my side of the story. <laughs> <laughs> Looking That's forward not- to it. <laughs> yes, if it if it starts off like your American Badger starts off with a punch, hers has to start off with her in like an interrogation room with the light over her, and just like, well, this is what really happened, yo. <laughs> you might be onto something. <laughs> All right, there we go. <laughs> well, Kirk, thank you so much for taking time to talk to me, man. Uh, this yeah, was fun. Uh, I. I I, 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 this was definitely uh, one of my funnest interviews, and I'm definitely looking forward uh, to seeing uh, the sec- the other side to this film. <laughs> Thanks, man. Thanks. This has been fun, man. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Anytime, anytime, bro. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you so much, everybody, for tuning in for this interview. Um, all of his socials will be down in the description below and where you can uh, purchase American Badger. And again, you keep an eye out for uh, the other vantage point of this uh, velvet side of the story coming soon. So thank you so much for tuning in, folks. And I will see you all very soon. Peace out. Thanks, guys. <laughs>